Most anticipated games of 2024. Hello ladies and gentlemen, the New Year's festivities are over, and it's time to gradually get back to reality. Today, I'd like to take you through the most anticipated games of 2024. I know I'm a bit late with this video, but it's going to be different from what you're used to. Those who have been watching my videos for a while know that besides the while know that besides the side themes of the monthly series, I also do compilations of anticipated games divided by genres and categories. So in this video, I'll quickly run through the most popular genres and see which games are the most awaited. To avoid overwhelming you with too much info, I'll try to keep the descriptions brief. So get comfortable and let's get started. Piana, let's start with first, person shooters. Last year, I already made a compilation of the most anticipated shooters, but this game wasn't included because at that time, its release was promised in 2023, but it was eventually pushed to 2024. I'm talking about a game called Pioneer, an MO raw peed shooter with a first-person view in a post-apocalyptic world with survival elements. The action takes place on an island divided into two territories. The first part is Peeve, where you can go through the storyline alone or with friends. You can level up your character, developing various skills. However, combat power will depend on your equipment and weapons, which you can craft and upgrade. You'll need to search for unique recipes and resources, which are found in the second half of the island, and there you will encounter PvP battles, clan wars, tougher monsters and the like. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 Staying on the topic, Let's look at the most anticipated third-person shooter. Of course, it's Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. The game looks so epic that it's already on the wish list of over a million people. The second part continues the story of the first. You again play as Captain Titus, but this time, the battle is not against orcs, but against Tyranids. They promise an exciting story campaign with a three-player co-op, a destructive arsenal of weapons, refined close combat mechanics, and massive battles against huge enemy horde. Black Myth. Wukong, moving on to action, RPGs. As you know, RPGs are a broad genre, and it's simply impossible to highlight just one game here. So let's quickly go through the most interesting and popular directions, namely Souls-like, Diablo-like, and open-world fantasy. Starting with Souls. Like, I think it's obvious, the most anticipated is Black Myth Wukong. The game is developed by the Chinese indie studio Game Science, but it looks like an AR project. The plot is based on the classic 16th century Chinese novel Will Journey to the West. Accordingly, we'll play as the Monkey King, whose main weapon is a staff. According to those who have already tried the demo, the gameplay will differ significantly from familiar souls, like games, this is due to faster combat dynamics and a vast array of skills and spells of the main character, including the ability to transform into other animals or insects. The game will also delight us with its visual style, interesting plot, and a huge variety of enemies. Path of Exile 2 Quickly touching on Diablo-like games. Here, I would highlight three games, Hades 2, Path of Exile 2, and Titan Quest 2. Personally, I would prefer Path of Exile 2. First, it's this release is definitely promised in 2024. Second, the graphics here are really amazing. In my opinion, Diablo 4 doesn't even come close. Hades 2. The new campaign will consist of six acts, with over 100 different locations, 600 types of monsters, and 100 bosses. There will be a choice of 12 character classes with an advanced system of leveling up skills and abilities there will be 240 active abilities and 1,500 passive skills available. In short, there's a lot in the game. The main thing is not to overdo it. However, the most anticipated among such games is Hades 2. Titan Quest 2. It's a continuation of the adventure action with rogue-like elements. This time, the main character is Melano, Zagreus's sister from the first part. In addition to melee and ranged weapons, her arsenal will also include various spells. The game is distinguished by a beautiful visual style and more dynamic battles. And a few words about Titan Quest II. The events unfold in ancient Greece. In the second part, we are promised a couple of innovations. The first 
is the ability to combine skills of different character classes, thus creating your unique class. And the second is meaningful loot. So in combination with the crafting system, you can upgrade even ordinary weapons to a unique item. But whether it will be released in 2024 is still a big question, since we still haven't seen any gameplay footage. Dragon's Dogma 2 and of course, let's look at open-world fantasy RPGs, where the most anticipated is Dragon's Dogma 2. I think you've already heard about this game from every corner multiple times, but the game really promises to be very good. First, it's Capcom, and they're developing the game on their engine, so we'll get good quality graphics and optimization. And second, it's a large, open, interactive world, awesome combat, Gothic 1 remake which will require the use of not only your skills and weapons, but also the environment. Many types of monsters, including large bosses that you can climb and kill in various ways. They also promise a large number of professions, day and night cycles, character customization, and all other features of modern RPGs. However, among similar games, I'm personally most looking forward to the remake of the first Gothic. In fact, in 2024, it's arguably the most anticipated game for me, which I definitely don't intend to miss. Honestly, I was a bit surprised when I looked at similar compilations, and this game was almost nowhere to be found. Just out of curiosity, guys, write in the comments if you're looking forward to the Gothic remake or not. Well, let's say a few words about the game. If you remember, a demo was released in 2019 where the game was criticized for its colorful look and combat-like in for honor, Forget about that. According to the developers, they scrapped the demo and started development from scratch, changing the engine from Unreal Engine 4 to version 5. They promise a dark world and a combat system like in the original. However, now weapon animations will change depending on the level of mastery and hunting skills will become the basis for survival. Also, according to the latest information, the open world has increased by about 24 on average. Developers are actively working on filling the world, trying to make it as lively and rich as possible. I really hope the remake is successful, and then we'll get a remake of the second part. Nightingale. Speaking of survival games, I was choosing between two options. The first is Nightingale, an adventure cooperative survival game with a first or third person view in a fantasy setting of the Victorian era. It's a PV survival game without PV pay and friendly fire, where you alone or teaming up travel through a world divided by portals into many locations which are randomly generated once human. And there you gather resources, fight monsters, defeat bosses, craft equipment, build a base, and so on. It all looks very beautiful and stylish, but perhaps the most anticipated in my opinion is once human. A year ago, I already told you about this game, and then the project was quite raw. However, relatively recently, namely on December 7, the game started its beta test, just when the day before finally reached its release, the corpse of which probably everyone who could has already kicked. So many people's opinion about the game changed, as here people found exactly what they were waiting for from the day before. A large, open, post-apocalyptic world, a variety of diverse monsters and bosses, PEEV and PVP modes, a story, crafting, weapons and equipment, base building, the ability to move on transport, an advanced system of character customization, and much more. In just the first week of the beta test, the number of interested people reached 50,000, forcing the developers to make the beta test closed again. Yes, the game still needs work, but its release is planned for the third quarter of 2024, and already now, it's receiving constant updates, and developers are very actively working on it. The only concern is that it's free to play, which means it could be filled with a donation shop upon release. But if this doesn't happen, or at least isn't paid to win, then we have every chance of getting a great game. Manor Lords. Moving on to strategies, and among them, the most anticipated are a couple of city-building simulators. All the others, turn-based, tactical, global, and the like, honestly didn't really catch my eye, and they weren't noticed anywhere. But maybe something else will appear during the year. So, the first and most anticipated is a long-term project called Manor Lots, a medieval city-building strategy with massive battles and an advanced economic system. The game started with just one person, but it looks like an IIA project, 
Moreover, at the time of making this video, the game ranks third in the list of all anticipated games on Steam. It recently got an exact release date. It will become available in early access on August 26, 2024. The game offers a huge range of possibilities, and although it is primarily a city-building simulator, you will also encounter tactical battles, a diplomacy system, trade with other settlements, resource management, and much more. The game supports the change of seasons, day and night cycles, weather conditions, diseases, and so on. In general, it's a very rich game. Let's hope it doesn't disappoint at release. And the second is Frostpunk 2. If you're not familiar with this series of games, here you need to build a settlement and survive in the conditions of eternal frost. If in the first part, the main danger was weather conditions, in the second, it will be social issues. That is, you will have to make much more complex political and social decisions. At the same time, the task is complicated by the fact that you will not be able to independently enact any laws at your discretion. First, you will need to gain public support. The game also increased the scale of construction. Now not individual buildings will be built, but entire districts, and added various factions, each requiring an individual approach. The release is promised in the first half of 2024. Alone in the dark. Moving on to horror games. Actually, 2024 is somehow not particularly rich in anticipated horrors. Anyone who doubts can look at the compilation. I just recently made one. So among all, I highlighted two games. The first is Alone in the Dark, an adventure horror with a third-person view. The game presents two storylines, where the main roles were played by real actors, Jodie Comer and David Harbour, as well as an atmospheric world. Lots of puzzles, deadly traps, battles with monsters, and a cool soundtrack. Well, I wouldn't say it's a horror that will scare you. Silent Hill 2 Remake. It's more like an interesting but slightly scary adventure. But the second horror has every chance of motivating you to lay a couple of bricks. I'm talking about Silent Hill 2 Remake. In the updated version, they promise improved graphics and sound, as well as reworked gameplay, but they very insistently promise to keep the plot as it is. Well, maybe some expansions, additions, explanations, 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 like in the Resident Evil remake. And if we believe the latest rumors about the game, the release may take place in March 2024. And by the way, despite the fact that the game does not have an exact release date, it has already received an award as the most anticipated horror. The casting of Frank Stone. Let's also take a look at such a genre as interactive cinema. In my opinion, there are two anticipated games in 2024, and as it turned out, both of them are horrors. The first is the new part of the dark pictures called Directive 8020. This time, the action takes place in space, where the crew of a spaceship is looking for a new home for humanity, but encounters an unknown threat. And the second, personally for me, the most interesting is the casting of Frank Stone, an interactive horror adventure in the dead by Daylight Universe. The game is also being worked on by Supermassive Games. Accordingly, the gameplay of the games will be very similar, but at the same time, they also promise us some features from the dead by Daylight Universe. According to the plot, the action will take place in the city of Cedar Hills, where serial killer Frank Stone once operated. Now a group of teenagers decides to dig into his legacy and finds trouble. Another nice thing is that the game will support full Russian localization. Crow's Warn. Moving on to the Metroidvania genre. Of course, the most anticipated game in this genre is the endlessly developed Hollow Knight Silksong, but whether it will be released in 2024 is still a big question. But another game that looks no less cool was ready for release in December 2023, but it was postponed for completely paradoxical reasons. The developers were crowdfunding the game on Kickstarter and ended up raising 10 times more than they had planned, so they need more time to make the most of the budget. But they promise us expanded hero capabilities, new mechanics, and much more. For such improvements, I think it's worth the wait. Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown what about racing games? You know, this is of course my personal opinion, but racing simulators lately seem like a dying genre. In 2023, there were quite a few races, but to say that any of them were memorable. New Need for Speed is not in a hurry to develop, so at the moment, 
Perhaps the most anticipated racing simulator is Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. The game takes place in Hong Kong and its surroundings with an open world recreated one to one. To briefly describe the game, it's like an MO in the style of Underground 2, where you race around the map, earn money, customize your character, and buy and upgrade car. But you know, while I was looking for information about the game and watching various previews, at the moment the game has not really impressed the fans. But, as they say, hope dies last. Star Wars Outlaws Speaking of adventure games, among all, I would highlight Star Wars Outlaws from Ubisoft, an adventure game in an open world with a third-person view in the Star Wars universe. The action takes place between the events of the movies, The Empire Strikes Backs, and Eckert Return of the Jedi, you take on the role of a girl named Kay Vs, who travels the galaxy in search of adventure and money. What interesting things do they promise us in this game? A large open world, cities full of activity, various factions, a reputation system, the possibility to play stealthily or aggressively, space flights and battles in a spaceship, and perhaps the most interesting, exiting into open space without loading screens. At first glance, the combat system is a mix of the Division and Watchdogs with the use of interactive environments and assistance. In this case, the partner will be an alien creature named Nyx. He will not only participate in battles, but also bring necessary items and help solve puzzles. Visually, the game looks really cool, but Ubisoft games always look good. But will it be as good in terms of story and gameplay? I think we'll only find out at release which, according to rumors, is promised in the second half of 2024. Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, and finally, I'd like to mention another game that many people are still eagerly awaiting. This is Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, whose release is promised in the fall of 2024. It's an action. RPG about vampires, but I've put it at the very end because, in my opinion, it could become one of the biggest failures of the year. Although, of course, in 2024, there are quite a few contenders for this title. In case you've forgotten, it was supposed to be released back in 2020, but everything looked so bad that the development was eventually handed over to another team, namely the Chinese Room. According to the developers, the game has been completely reworked from gameplay to story. And recently, they showed us a small trailer where you can see that it didn't get much better. However, in January 2024, they promised to show detailed gameplay of the reworked gameplay, and then I think everything will become clear. Here, you know, the saying is very appropriate. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Well, dear friends, this is the experimental video I ended up with. I hope you found it interesting. Be sure to write in the comments which games you are most looking forward to in 2024. Don't forget to support this video with a like, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's all from me. Until next time, bye!